Configuring stored sessions in WinSCP. This tutorial will show you how to configure WinSCP to connect to a server. A stored session is a saved list of account settings that can be loaded for a connection to an account on a particular server. Click Stored Sessions. Once you create a stored session, it will be listed here so that you can select it when you want to establish a connection to the server. Now let's add the settings we need for our session. Click the New button. Click the Advanced Options checkbox. Select the file protocol. WinSCP supports three different methods that can be used for file transfers. It supports traditional FTP connections, SFTP connections, and SCP connections. Traditional FTP connections are not encrypted. SFTP and SCP connections are encrypted. SFTP achieves an encrypted connection by routing FTP traffic to the server over SSH. SCP similarly achieves the same result by tunneling the Linux commands through an SSH session. SCP will require that shell access be granted for the user. Since SSH is not available on Windows-based systems, SCP and SFTP cannot be used to connect to a Windows-based server. Open SSH for Windows can be installed and configured to allow this on a Windows-based server and is not installed by default. Only system users can be granted SSH access, therefore secondary FTP accounts cannot use SCP for their connections. SFTP does not require shell access to be granted, but is also only available to system level users. SFTP should not be confused with FTPS, which is a means of establishing an encrypted FTP connection that is supported by some FTP servers and does not require SSH access. Secondary FTP users can use FTPS to connect if the server and the user's client supports it. However, FTPS is not supported by WinSCP. For the purposes of this demonstration, we will be using SCP for our configuration. The options displayed here will vary based on which method is used to configure the session. Consult the documentation provided with WinSCP for more information concerning options not covered in this tutorial. If you're connecting to a dedicated server as the root user, it is recommended that you use either SCP or SFTP for your connection. It is considered a security risk to enable traditional FTP access for the root user, which would be required for all other connection methods. Available functionality will vary dependent on the method chosen for the connection. Enter the host name. Typically, this is. If your domain is still pointing to a different server or your DNS changes have not propagated yet, you can use the IP address of the server instead of a fully qualified domain name. For traditional FTP connections, the standard port is 21. Since SFTP and SCP connections are routed through SSH, this should be the port used for SSH access on the server. The standard port for SSH is 22. However, a common security configuration is to change the SSH port to a non-standard port. For the server we will be connecting to, the port is 2222. Enter the username. Enter the password. You will want to take into account where you're connecting from before saving your password in the stored session. 
If you're connecting from a system that is also accessed by other users, this would be considered a security risk, especially if you have shell access and are connecting via SCP, as these login credentials can be used to access and execute commands on the system instead of just managing the files and directories. If the server is configured to use a private key to authenticate SSH sessions instead of using password authentication, you can install the private key file here. Now let's look at some of the other options. Click Logging. Here we could enable logging of all of the events that occur in using the stored session. This can be useful in troubleshooting problems or investigating other issues. However, it is not necessary for functionality purposes. Click Environment. This setting controls the assumed server characters for line breaks in text files used for conversion in ASCII transfers, if not specified by the server explicitly. This option can be used to copy files to your local recycle bin when deleting from the server in case files are deleted accidentally. Click Directories. Enter the remote directory. For primary domains on cPanel accounts, this should be for subdomains and add-on domains if when connecting with the cPanel user, this should be for subdomains and add-on domains when connecting with a separate FTP user, this should be For primary domains on Plesk accounts, this should be For subdomains on Plesk accounts, depending on the configuration of the subdomain, this should be If this field is left blank, the remote directory will default to the user's home directory. Here you can specify the local directory with the location of files stored for this site on your local machine. WinSCP will then automatically open to that local directory when first establishing a connection to the server. Click the dot 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 button. Click the plus. Click the directory. Click the OK button. Click SCP Shell. These options are used to customize the interaction through the SSH connection. Click Connection. These settings control how inactive connections and request timeouts are handled from the client side. It is advised to check with your provider's Terms of Service or TOS policies before enabling and configuring a Keep Alive option for the connection. Leaving unattended sessions open that are inactive can be a security risk and may be prohibited by your provider. Click Proxy. Some networks or providers may require you to route the connection through a proxy server in order to connect. Here is where you can configure the settings if this is the case. Click Tunnel. In much the same way as proxy servers, some providers may only allow SSH connections from a particular other server, requiring a tunnel through that server to connect to this one.
Here is where you can configure that if this is the case. SSH These settings control the SSH protocol version's encryption algorithms supported by the server. Click the key exchange. Here are more options concerning these algorithms. Click Authentication. Depending on the configuration of the server, you may also need to configure specific options here for WinSCP to be able to follow the server's protocol for authentication. Click Bugs. WinSCP can automatically attempt to detect and compensate for known bugs that may be communicating with some SSH servers. Click Preferences. WinSCP has two general styles that you can select from for the user interface. Click the Preferences button. Here you can further customize the behavior of the user interface. Click the OK button. Now let's save the settings for our session. Click the Save button. WinSCP gives us this warning about saving the password for the same reasons we mentioned earlier. Click the OK button. WinSCP automatically populates the name for the session based on the username and host name of the server. However, this can be changed to whatever you want to name it. Click the OK button. Finally, let's connect to the server. Click the Login button. The first time you connect, you will likely see this screen, since the key used for the encryption is not on your local machine. Once you accept it, you won't see this again, unless the key is changed on the server or removed from your local machine. Click the Yes button. Congratulations, you now know how to configure WinSCP to connect to a server.